Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the pastor. You can call me Pastor Josh if you'd like. Today, we're going to be talking about how to win a game of Smash, and even more importantly, how to take a stock in Smash. Because if you can't take a stock, you're going to have a lot of trouble winning a match. Now, a lot of people think that winning a match is an easy thing to do, but it's honestly kind of difficult. You never know what to expect, and if you think that you know what to expect, then you might be defeating yourself in the long run. So, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go into the most important things, the two most important things before a match begins, goals and mentality. Now, first off, what do we mean by goals? I'm not talking about your goals and what you want to accomplish, but rather, what is it that your character wants to accomplish? And I know that might sound a little bit odd or a little bit wrong, but hear me out. Your character has a move set, and your character's move set is meant to accomplish things. Um, maybe it's pushing a character or your opponent to the ledge. Maybe it's juggling and keeping someone off the ground and always in the air. Maybe your character is just really good at ledge trapping. Maybe they're a camping character. Whatever the case, you need to figure out what is it that your character wants to accomplish because that's where you're most likely going to thrive. Then the other half of it is mentality. It's the what should I be thinking type of question. It's should I be passionate or should I be calm? How is it that I'm going to play my best? And so figuring out what type of mentality you need to have is really important. For me personally, I like to listen to music right before a match to try and calm myself down. And I always typically will pick something to look for. Uh, sometimes it's looking for just jumps and what are the jump patterns. Other times it's how long is this person going to stay in shield? Or is this person just kind of mashing or not? Those type of things are what's going to help you develop the neutral game. All right, and now we're in the match at this point. So neutral game is conditioning, learning habits, knowing the character matchup, which is probably the thing that most people need to work on. Um, most people have a good sense, I think, of how to condition a person, and maybe they aren't the best at doing it, but they have an idea of what it is. And then there's learning habits. I think that's the thing that most people understand and probably do the most. But the most lacking part of neutral game that I think I've seen in myself and in a lot of other players is knowing the matchup. Knowing the matchup is not an easy thing to do. Sometimes you got to figure it out on the spot. So what do I mean by knowing the matchup? Well, what I mean is, for example, Bestness and Tweak, who are on the screen right now. Right now, Tweak has to figure out what can his character Wario do. He knows what his character wants to do and what the character's goals are. But at the same time, we have to remember that Ness has goals too. Bestness has goals. And so we have to look at their movesets. Tweak has to figure out... Well, does my Nair clash with Ness's aerials or not? Uh, what about my up air? What about forward air? What seems to get around Ness's toolkit? What is the matchup? And so that's really what discovering the matchup is. And when you do figure that out, then you're going to have more opportunities for combo game. This is the next part. Combo game is so crucially important if you want to get damage. Um, and if you're looking for a solid lead, I don't think I really need to talk too much about combo game because it's pretty obvious. I think what's more important though is advantage state. And this is technically a part of the combo phase, but it can even go after the combo phase. The advantage state essentially is just how is it that you can push your advantage as far as you possibly can. Okay, so advantage state. Basically, right after a combo, you might find yourself that your opponent still hasn't landed. How is it that you can capitalize on that? That's advantage state. Now, the opposite side of it is disadvantage. Knowing what your options are when landing, getting out of combos, getting out of juggles, whatever it may be. And disadvantage is really important to talk about. I think this is the weakest area for all Smash Brother players. It's disadvantage. Most of us struggle with figuring out how is it that we can get out of combos or situations. And honestly, if you're getting out of disadvantage really easily, then it's probably because your opponent doesn't understand advantage state so well. Um, at least there's a good chance of that. So keep in mind that disadvantage is something that needs to be practiced. Um, I recommend playing a game with a friend and once you go into disadvantage, just trying to figure out what are my best options and asking your friend or whoever you're playing against, how is it that you cover 
all the options or that you try to because in understanding that and understanding your opponent's goals and your char your opponent's character goals that's how you can figure out how to get out of disadvantage as far as in practice goes so then right after advantage state going back to there we end up in the ledge trapping phase most likely you've pushed your opponent off stage if you were driving them towards the ledge or let's say you're juggling them most of the time in order to get out of the juggle you need to stop landing landing in center stage which means you need to go to the ledge right so ledge trapping basically this is just all about how to keep your opponent from coming back to stage now when you're doing your ledge trapping i think that there's a lot of people who they'll try to punish by actually making a combo like go all the way across the stage but honestly it's just better to keep your opponent off stage like don't use the way that they come back on stage as a way to give them or push them back into stage keep them off the level as much as possible because what that does is leads us into our next phase and that's the edge guarding phase you see edge guarding is trying to go off of the level most of the time it starts there and you just drive them all the way as far as you can exhausting all of their resources and yes you're going to end up sacrificing stage control for it but it's essentially just pushing your advantage to the max now when you're going to go for an edge guard it's best to exhaust resources from the ledge trapping phase first if you don't have a chance to do any sort of ledge trapping then most likely you're going to end up playing a little greedy you're going to go off stage and you might end up being the one who gets ledge trapped and then edge guarded so you don't want to fall into that into a reverse edge guard situation you want to be the one in control as much as possible now there's only one last thing to talk about in this video and that's the next stock the new fresh stock of your opponent after you've taken the stock and they're coming back to the level you got to restart the process from scratch now i think a lot of people think like you're just going to do it all over again you already have the reads you already know what they're going to do take all of that knowledge and toss it out the window because here's the thing It'll never be truly gone, you'll always kind of have it there, but you need to dismiss it as much as possible because your opponent is thinking. Most likely, they have to switch something up, right? Because they whatever they did before didn't work. So they're going to come back with new intentions, and that means that you have to decipher what those things are. And here's the good news. If they don't come back with new intentions, if they don't have a new play style, if they don't figure out how to get around what you're doing before then that means that you just get to keep using the info you already have. It makes it way easier on you. In fact, you can make your punishes way harder. You can make your combo game way harder. You can make advantage harder. And you can just absolutely destroy them. So that's kind of all it is uh, to win a game in Smash. That's, that's what it is. It's just one stock at a time. And you always want to think... Uh, fresh you always want to think new you always want to be creative and i think the most important tip that i've ever received was from zero and zero once he told me that i needed to play more random in neutral because playing random and neutral makes it that you you're trying to play against your own habits and therefore your opponent is going to struggle with that more because they don't know what you're going to approach with or what you're going to defend with um, so that's just one little tip at the end of all of this anyways i hope that you all have a great day like comment subscribe i'm gonna be making more fun content i'm gonna probably play with a, a pro player um so yeah keep checking the channel i hope you guys have a blessed day god bless you and i'll see you guys in the next video